What happened to Ukraine's in 71 AWACS, once it was best in the world? Currently, Russia and Ukraine have been battling in the same room for months. In the past, brothers turned against one another, so Ukraine's once proud defense and military industry also lost the largest market. The Ukrainian Air Force was not equipped with early warning aircraft that could control air supremacy, but in reality, they built two early warning aircraft that were quite advanced at the time and could be compared to the American-made E-2 Hawkeye. Near the international airport of Igor Sikorsky in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, there is a huge and extremely rich aviation museum, the National Aviation Museum of Ukraine, which houses a large collection of modern fighters made in the Soviet era, from the largest 222M3 backfire strategic bomber to many fighters developed by various design bureaus. The products of the Antonov Design Bureau in Ukraine are also very rich, and one of the most strange-looking early warning aircraft is a treasure, that is, the N-71 early warning aircraft, and most of the early warning aircraft use disc-shaped radar antennas arranged on the back of the aircraft. The N-71 was successfully developed in the 1980s, and unlike the rumored carrier-based early warning aircraft, this early warning aircraft was actually established as a new generation of early warning aircraft of the Soviet Air Force, and had nothing to do with aircraft carriers and the Navy, because the Soviet Homeland Air Defense Force used the Tu-126 early warning aircraft based on the Tu-114 passenger aircraft, derived from the Tu-95 strategic bomber platform at that time, and the lack of detection capabilities for low-altitude targets was in urgent need of replacement. In the end, the Soviet Union decided that the Tagan Rock Bereave Design Bureau would develop a second-generation long-range early warning aircraft codenamed Product A based on the IL-76 large military transport aircraft platform, which was first flown in 1978 and put into use in 1985, which used the rotating early warning radar developed by the Vega Research Institute in Moscow for use of the Homeland Air Defense Force. The Soviet Union's A-50 was designed by Antonov as a whole, the future for use by the Soviet Air Force, the platform used is Antonov developed and first flew in 1977, put into production in 1982 a twin-engine turbofan power short takeoff and landing multi-purpose transport aircraft, in 72, there if the A-50 is the benchmark with the US E-3 at that time, then in 1982 to launch a new generation of tactical early warning aircraft project. According to the N-71 indicators formulated in 1983, the aircraft is required to have an endurance of not less than 5 hours, the quantum early warning radar developed by the Vega Research Institute has a search distance of up to 360 kilometers, has the ability to track 120 targets at the same time, and has the ability to penetrate voice and other data under multiple command posts at the same time, and also the early warning radar to have the ability to find low-altitude small targets, such as the ability of the US-made Tomahawk cruise missile, and at the same time, the carrier platform has the ability to operate in bad weather and various geographical environments. This is also the advantage of the N-72 platform because the aircraft itself is much smaller than the A-50, it has only six tactical command stations. A total of three prototypes were built for the N-71, and by convention, Prototype 2 was a static test aircraft. In July 1985, the first prototype of the USSR 780151 completed its first flight, and in February 1986, the prototype number 3 with the number USSR 780361 made its first flight, but at that time, the West did not find the existence of such an early warning aircraft, until 1987, the figure of the N-71 appeared in a picture book of Soviet civil aviation, and the photo was taken by a Ukrainian photographer who did not know that secrecy is to protect combat effectiveness when Gorbachev inspected the Security Bureau in 1985. It was only the West that confirmed the existence of the N-71 for the first time. The second prototypes of the N-71 have undergone hundreds of test flights, of which the number one prototype has 387 flights, 650 flight hours, and the number three aircraft has 362 flights, 380 flight hours. In 1990, the project was stopped due to the drastic changes in the Soviet Union and lack of funds. After independence, Ukraine was even more unable to continue this project. Two prototypes were once parked at the Antonov Airport, and after 2010, the first prototype was moved to the National Aviation Museum.
It is unclear whether Prototype 3 is still alive after a fierce battle. It should be pointed out that the radar antenna of the N-71 is very high, it is completely impossible to cram into the aircraft carrier hangar, and it was not designed at the beginning of the ship-based early warning aircraft. In contrast, the Yak-44 developed by the Yakovlev Design Bureau is the carrier-based early warning aircraft prepared for the nuclear carrier Ulyanovsk, which looks the same as the E-2, but uses two much more powerful D-27 paddle fan engines, which are also used by the N-70 new generation tactical transport aircraft, but the Yak-44 only made a full-scale model and never built a prototype. In order to compete with the Yak-44, Antonov has proposed an N-75 carrier-based early warning aircraft program based on the N-74 platform, which shows that if the Ulyanovsk nuclear aircraft carrier is successfully launched and commissioned, Ukrainian aviation manufacturing companies will contribute as much as shipbuilding companies, 